Welcome back. This is question number seven from the P4 International A-Level at Excel specimen paper from Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. And we are going to um, answer seven part A, which is using integration by parts to show this particular um, result here. Now, this is a question which is actually something I haven't seen before in P4. And it's something which takes me back to something which is, um, you know, not really seen before in p4 is a way to integrate which is quite uh, common but normally it comes at a level slightly higher than p4 so i haven't really seen a question like this in the textbook either um so you know this is a specimen paper so it's supposed to show the kind of questions that could come up so it's important for us to actually go through this and um, you know maybe cause me to have to modify and add something like this to my notes because if they put this in the specimen paper, it's possible that you could have this in the real thing. So it's slightly different um, to what we're used to. Now, integration by parts, what we normally do is we normally have uh, one part of, um, you have normally a product of two unrelated functions, not like a function within a function or anything like that. I can't use reverse of the chain rule. It's difficult to use substitution. Okay, so we use what's called integration by parts. And the formula for integration by parts is given in the formula book. Okay, it's given in the formula book and um, it's basically uh, if you have um, you have the integral of uh, u times the differential of v is given to given as u times v minus the integral of v times u dash and something like that that's that's basically the the um, integration by parts method but i i don't like to use memorizing this i don't like to memorize this formula i do it in a particular way where i just write things in a certain order and then i know exactly what to do so here the problem with this question is you normally choose your u as the thing that breaks down into something simpler now neither of these two will break down into something simpler okay if i integrate if i differentiate e to the power of 2x i'm going to get two times e to the power of 2x if i differentiate differentiate cosine 2x i'm going to get minus 2 times sine of 2x. So they don't actually become simpler, they become in fact more complicated, both of them. Um, and so that's something where a lot of students might have a problem here. But there is a method that you'll see that will turn up, uh, will show, show up later on, which will, as you're going through the question, you'll be able to spot it. You might not spot it straight away. So if you haven't had experience of this type of question, you might just like get stuck right from the beginning. But um, there is something that's going to happen that will make you realize what to do at the end but choosing I mean I'm going to choose my u as e to the power of 2x okay simply because when I integrate cosine 2x I'm going to get a positive value I think this will work out in both ways it will still work out to give us the right answer in the end whether I chose my u as cosine 2x or my u as e to the power of 2x it should still work out both ways and in fact I'm going to actually go through it to make sure to see that it does work out the same in both ways um, just 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 to uh, to see if it actually works so what I'm going to do now so one of them you call u the other one you call dvdx now normally the one you call u is the one that breaks down in this case neither of them break down so it doesn't really matter too much which one you choose okay so I'm going to now find du dx which is 2 e to the power of 2x so I have to differentiate this to give me that. And for this one, I have to find v, so I have to integrate this. So the integral of cosine of something is sine of the same thing. But because it's cosine of 2x, you're going to do a half. You have to, multi you have to divide by the differential of what's inside the function. So I have to divide by 2. So it will be a half times the sine of 2x. OK, I don't need to put the plus c here. I can do that in the main question now when I when I I'm gonna now see for, for this question you'll probably realize later on it's important to keep writing down this what you start with and you'll see why towards the end okay so e to the power of 2x cosine 2x with respect to x integral is now the way I like to do it I don't memorize the formula I write it like this u first dv dx to the right of it underneath u I write du dx underneath dv dx I write v then it's always going to be this times this uv so it's going to be a half times e to the power of 2x times sine 2x minus the integral of these two multiplied. So you're going to have a half times 2, which is going to give you 1. And you're going to have e to the power of 2x times sine of 2x 
dx. Now, you see what looks like it's going to happen here. It's like, oh, well, you're going to have to integrate this, and I'm going to have the same problem again, because these two, none of them break down. So it looks like we're going to go, for, go on forever. But you'll see that we're not going to go on forever, and you'll see why in a minute. Okay, so let's just continue. Let's just take this part here. So I'm going to keep writing this down. I normally don't keep writing this down, but you'll see why I'm going to keep writing this down. Um, whoops, what am I doing? That's e to the power of 2x. Let me write that a bit better. So I have e to the power of 2x cosine of 2x with respect to x is equal to. So I've got this here already, a half. e to the power of 2x sine 2x minus. Okay, now I'm going to have to integrate this part here. So I'm going to use integration by parts again. So what I'm going to do, um, I'll use this space up here. I'll say u, I'll use this space up here. So now my new, I'm going up here now. So u equals e to the power of 2x. And now my dv dx is equal to sine 2x. So this is going to give me um, du dx, which is 2 e to the power of 2x. And my v is now going to be minus a half cosine 2x because I integrate sine of something gives me minus co cosine of the same thing but then I have to div divide by, by the differential force inside the function so now I'll do the same thing so it'll be u times v so I'm going to have here e to the power of 2x so I'll have a minus a half e to the power of 2x times cosine 2x and I have minus the integral of then I'll have this times this. So the minus and the minus will give you a plus. The two and the minus half, the two and a half will cancel out. I'll have e to the power of two x times cosine two x with respect to x. Now what you're going to notice here is that this is exactly the same as that, and that's the key to answering this question now. Okay. Now you might not um, understand this straight away, but let's first simplify what we've got. So that's why I keep writing this down. This is e to the power of 2x times cosine 2x dx equals, now this is a half, e to the power of 2x sine 2x, and this is a minus times a minus, which is a plus. I have a half e to the power of 2x cosine 2x plus the integral of e to the power of 2x cosine 2x dx. You might think, oh, we're going on forever. But what we notice is these two are exactly the same. These two are exactly the same, okay? Um, and that's supposed to be a minus, by the way. I just almost missed it up there. That's supposed to be a minus because you got a minus and a plus gives you a minus, okay? Minus and a plus gives you a minus. Be very careful because there's a bracket here. Okay, very important. So minus and a plus gives you a minus. Now, if I bring this to the same side as that, I have to add the, the integral of e to the power of 2x, cosine 2x, dx to both sides. This side will have two times the integral of e to the power of 2x, cosine 2x, dx, equals, and I'm left with this here, which is a half. I can take a half e to the power of 2x out of these two terms, by the way. I'll have sine 2x plus cosine 2x, and now I'm finally able to write down my answer as the integral of this is what we have to find integral of 2x times cosine 2x with respect to x is going to be if I divide by 2 I'll get a quarter e to the power of 2x times the sine of 2x plus the cosine of 2x plus c okay don't forget the plus c at the end you can write the plus c with this integration by parts you can write the plus c at the end it's no problem okay so there is the answer and that's what I've had to show Let's see if it's correct. A quarter e to the power of 2x times sine, x, sine 2x plus cosine 2x plus c. e to the power of 2x sine 2x plus cosine 2x over 4 plus c. Yeah, same thing. Okay, so just to write it in the way they gave it, you can just put that 4 underneath the whole fraction, and that's fine. Okay, so that's, uh, as I said, it's a different style question. I haven't seen one in a C4, in a past C4 paper before. Um, there might have been one, might have missed, missed it, but, you know, I'm. this is something that I had to think about, you know, once we got to this stage. You see, this, this is one that once you realize that, once you realize that nothing breaks down, you will see that there comes a stage where you end up with the same thing 
uh, what you started with on this side, you end up with the same thing on the other side. You can bring them together and then you can, you know, so I have two of them now and then I divide both sides by two and I'm left with my answer. Okay, so whenever you see something in an integration by parts where you see that then nothing breaks down, then you just carry on just as normal until you get the same thing on one side as the other with the integral and bring them together and then you can uh, express your answer. Now, as I said, I'm going to go through the same question, okay, um, taking my u as a cosine 2x and my v as e to the power of 2x just to see if it actually works and just to show you that it should actually work. Okay, so let me just get that set up. Okay, so now I'm going to go through the same question again, but just to taking um, my u as um, cosine 2x and my dv dx as e to the power of 2x, just to show that we should get the same thing. So if I find du dx, I'm going to get um, differentiating uh, it's going to give you minus 2 sine 2x and here integrating will give me a half e to the power of 2x so I'll say the integral of e to the power of 2x times cosine 2x with respect to x is equal to u times v so these this times this which will give me a half e to the power of 2x times cosine 2x minus the integral of these two so you're going to have a minus and the minus gives you plus and the two and a half cancel out, you'll have e to the power of 2x times sine 2x with respect to x. And now I have to continue. So I'm going to keep writing this down as I said, e to the power of 2x cosine 2x with respect to x equals a half e to the power of 2x cosine 2x plus, now I've got to integrate this. So now I'm going to take my u as e to the power, of, uh, uh, sorry, let's take it as sine 2x, let's use the same pattern as before and dv dx as e to the power of 2x. So I'll have du dx gives me, if I differentiate sine 2x, I get 2 cosine 2x. And if I integrate dv dx, I'm going to get a half e to the power of 2x. So I'll have sine 2x times a half e to the power of 2x. So that's a half e to the power of 2x times the sine of 2x minus the integral of uh, these two multiplied, which is a half times 2, which is 1, e to the power of 2x times cosine 2x dx. So you can see, again, the same thing happens. We get the same thing on both sides. So let's simplify this. So you have the integral of e to the power of 2x times cosine 2x dx equals a half e to the power of 2x times cosine 2x. I've got plus a half e to the power of 2x times sine 2x minus, this time is a minus, e to the power of 2x cosine 2x dx. And again, I can see that these two are exactly the same. I can bring them on the same side by adding e to the power of 2x cosine 2x with respect to x on both sides. So I end up with 2 times e to the power of 2x cosine 2x dx equals a half e to the power of 2x. Let's take out the factor from these two terms. I have cosine 2x plus sine 2x, and then I can divide both sides by 2. So I end up with the integral of e to the power of 2x times cosine of 2x dx equals e to the power of 2x, don't forget the plus c, uh, e to the power of 2x times cosine 2x plus sine 2x all over 4 plus c, which is exactly what we had to show. Okay, exactly what we had to show here. You just have the cosine and sine, uh, you know, written in the other order, but it's no problem. It's the same thing. Okay, so whether we take the u as e to the power of 2x or the u as cosine 2x, it still gives us the same answer. And that's how you should deal with these type of questions. So whenever you see integration by parts where you can see that choosing u as something and uh, v, you know, choosing any of them of u won't break it down. It will just give you something, you know, uh, more complicated. Then you can continue, but always look out for the fact that always write down what you start with on the left side and always look out for the stage where you get them being exactly the same. Like here, they're exactly the same. So I can add this to both sides and I can find the integral in that way. Okay, that's how you deal with this type of question. When you see by parts, it doesn't break down and you're going to keep having to go on forever if you just carried on you know, integrating this bit of spot.
try to spot them being the same. You can bring them together and then you can solve it in that way. Okay, so that's a very important point there. So that's 7a done in a slightly different way as well, just to show that it doesn't matter which way you do it. When you have a question like this, okay, that you know you can eventually solve the problem. But if it is a question where one of them breaks down, you must choose you as that one, otherwise it just gets more and more complicated and this thing might not actually happen in every case. Okay, so there's the answer for part A. And I'm going to go into part B now. Okay, so 7 part B. It says here, figure 4 shows a sketch of the curve with equation y equals f of x, where f of x equals e to the power of x cosine x. The finite region r, as um, shown, shaded in figure 4, is bounded by the curve, the positive y-axis and the positive x-axis. The region r is rotated 360 degrees, 2 pi radians, about the x-axis to form a solid of revolution. Using the result from part A, find the exact volume of the solid formed. Okay, so we need to find the volume of the solid formed when this is rotated right around the x-axis. Okay, so um, it says use the result from part A, but we'll deal with that in a minute. Let's just start off by trying to set this up. So when you find the volume of revolution, what you're basically doing is you are basically splitting up this section into small little rectangles. Okay, small little rectangles. Let me just uh, do something here to make it look a bit better. Okay, and you are taking this rectangle and um, you are basically saying, okay, uh, let's rotate this around let's rotate this rectangle all around the x-axis so it's like three-dimensional it's coming rotating all the way around the x-axis it doesn't look that good okay so this whole thing is rotating around the x-axis okay so this cylinder it's like it, it forms basically a cylinder a small thin little cylinder when you rotate it around the x-axis that's what it forms okay and the radius of the cylinder is the same as this length over here and the thickness of the cylinder is called a small part of x which they call dx so the volume of this cylinder is going to be given by the um, volume of a cylinder is equal to um, uh, pi times r squared times h right that's the volume of a cylinder so this is a cylinder whose radius is the r is basically the y value of this point so the r is equal to the y and your h is equal to it's basically the thickness of the cylinder which is dx so the volume of that little cylinder here is going to be pi times y squared times dx if we call those things as we call them and we want to find the the sum of the volumes of the cylinders from the beginning to the end okay so from the beginning to the end so we got to basically integrate Let's call this point A here. From here, this will be from 0 to A. The integrating between 0 and A, this expression will tell you the, the basically the sum of all the volumes of all the cylinders that you have from the beginning to the end of this limits. Okay, so that's what this, this does. When you integrate, you're basically finding the sum of all of those volumes. Okay, when you integrate between 0 and a. So pi y squared dx is basically the sum of the volumes of all those little cylinders from the beginning to the end. So that's what we need to do here. We need to find, we know the volume is equal between 0 and the point a, which we have to find. We can write the pi outside because it's a, it's a constant. So pi y squared dx. Now we, we can see what f of x is. Now y, our y here is e to the power of x cosine x. So I have to um, use that. So from 0 to a, and I'm going to have e to the power of x times cosine x squared. All right, so if I, if I just uh, write what that is, um, e to the power of x squared is e to the power of 2x. Multiply the powers. And cosine x all squared is the same as cosine squared x. Okay, so now that's why I have to integrate between the limits of 0 and a. So let me find out the limits are going to be. So I know the limit is, a, uh, is 0. Let me find what the a is going to be. The a is going to be the place where this curve hits the x-axis. 
okay, when y equals 0. So you can find that limit here when y equals 0. You have e to the power of x times cosine x equals 0. So you have either e to the power of x equals 0 or you have cosine x equals 0. Okay, when e to the power of x equals 0, that's when x equals 1. And cosine x equals 0, okay, cosine x equals 0 when x equals, um, let's have a look, when x equals, we know, at 90 degrees, which is pi over 2, okay. Oops, sorry about that. E to the power of x equals 0, well, that's not, not possible. Okay, it's undefined. Not when e x equals um, 0, sorry about that. It's undefined. Okay, e to the power of x equals 0, when it's, that's undefined. E to the power of x never equals 0. That was a bit of a silly mistake. When cosine x equals 0, that's when x equals pi over 2. 90 degrees is when x equals, um, when cosine x equals 0. That's right. Okay, so now what we can do is we can say that the limit here is going to be pi over 2. Okay, so we have to integrate this with respect to x. Now, um, to integrate this, let's have a look at what our result was. That's not it. Our result was from the previous question. Okay, I'll just get the result from the previous. Okay, so here we have the result for the previous question. As you can see, they're not the same. This says cosine 2x and this says cosine squared x. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to change this into the form of cosine um, 2x. That's what we need to do. Okay, so let's think about our identities that we know. We know that cosine 2x is equal to um, 2 times cosine squared x minus 1 of one of the identities that we should definitely know. And we can use the double angle formula. Um, we can use the compound, uh, the addition formula to, to prove this, cosine x plus x. And you can prove this quite easily. So 2 cosine squared x minus 1. If I make cosine squared x the subject of this, what I'm going to have is cosine squared x is equal to um, cosine 2x plus 1 okay, uh, divided by 2. So I can replace this by cosine 2x plus 1 divided by 2. Let's see what happens there. So we're going to have pi times the integral between 0 and pi over 2 e to the power of 2x times, you're going to have, let me take the half out here, so it'll be over 2 there. I'll have cosine of 2x plus 1 with respect to x. Now what I can do is I can multiply this bracket out, and it will be something that I'm able to factorize. Let me just do it over here. So I'll have pi over 2, integral between the limits of pi over 2 and 0, of e to the power of 2x times cosine 2x, which is exactly what we had um, to integrate earlier, um, plus e to the power of 2x dx. Now I can use my result, which is over here. This is the result I need. Uh, I can just replace this by all of that, and e to the power of 2x integrating will give me e to the power of 2x divided by 2. So let me just write my answer down here. So I have pi over 2 times this is going to give me all of that, which is e to the power of 2x times cosine uh, times sine 2x. Sine 2x plus cosine 2x over 4. Okay, um, that's right. And then plus a half e to the power of 2x. And all of that is between pi over 2 and 0. So now I have to substitute these values in. Okay, I could make life a bit easier for myself if I wanted to. Um, first, okay, I, I think I need more space. So I'm going to go to the next page and take this with me. Okay, so uh, let me make it a bit simpler so that we can um, proceed with a bit more ease. Um, I can, um, what I can do here is put this under one denominator here. So pi over 2, I can write this as um, e to the power of 2x sine 2x plus cosine 2x over 4 plus 2 over 4 e to the power of 2x. I can take out 4 as common, so I'll have pi over 8. I can also take out e to the power of 2x as common, 
and I'm left with basically e to the power of uh, no, I'm left with basically cos sine 2x uh, sine 2x plus cosine 2x plus 2 inside here and now I have to substitute in my values pi over 2 and 0 so I can do it like this so I have pi over 8 times e to the power of now 2 times pi over 2 is pi and I have sine um, I have 2 times pi over 2 which is again pi plus cosine pi plus 2 okay and I have minus I have e to the power of 0 times sine of 0 plus cosine of 0 plus 2 never discount the 0 part when you're doing a question like this because things like cosine 0 and e to the power of 0 do give you a value that isn't <coughs> that, that isn't 0 so you have to make sure you take that, those into account so, <coughs> so you have pi over 8 you have e to the power of pi now the sine of pi is 0 and the cosine of pi is minus 1 so you have minus 1 plus 2 okay the sine of pi if you remember the sine of pi it's like sine curve goes like that that's 0 that's pi that's 2 pi cosine of pi goes like this so at pi it's minus 1 you could just use your calculator for that anyway minus e to the power of 0 is 1 times sine of 0 is 0 but cosine of 0 is 1 you have 1 plus 2 here so be careful about that don't ever discount those the zero that uh, goes into there some people just say oh it's going to make everything zero it doesn't especially when you have e's and cosines and stuff so you've got pi over eight times that's two minus one which is one so e to the power of pi minus one times three which is three and there's your answer okay pi over eight times e to the power of pi minus three how do they ask us to express our answer exact volume Okay, so there we have the exact volume of the solid formed when you revolve it around 360 degrees. So this is, um, you can say, units cubed. Okay, so there's the answer for that question, which is question number seven, using the result that we found in part A. If you couldn't find the result in part A, if you weren't able to do that, you don't, doesn't mean you you throw away these six marks you can use that result as we did here and continue and get the answer okay so this is a question here about uh, volumes of revolution part b part a was integration by parts which is a very different style of question of integration by parts um i'm sorry that i took you so it took me so long to do it but i was just showing you some different ways of doing part a just to make sure and here we have um, the playlist which will give you other questions from this same paper, the specimen paper of the International A-Level, uh, P4. And here you have another playlist which will take you to the playlist for the questions to do with integration um, from P4. And on the top of the screen you'll, have, you'll see a card that should have been appearing from the beginning which tells you uh, or gives you a link to other P4 style questions or papers and here you have an icon to subscribe to my channel if you wish to do so. Thank you for watching and hope to see you soon.